So uh, uh, good, good morning, uh, happy Sabbath to everybody. And uh, today's presentation, uh, today's study will be regarding the Sabbath. And uh, you know, I, I would like participation and I am willing to be corrected. So if there's anything that I might have said something that, that is incorrect or you don't understand, or if you have input uh, to deepen our understanding, if you're inspired to say something more, uh, please do. Uh, please do. This is, you know, the, the subject of about the Sabbath. You know, it's um, you know it's it's an important uh, subject to understand, and um, you know it's it's one of these things, uh, teachings, doctrines that uh, you know we don't want to touch because it's you know we consider it very sacred, and it was very humbling for me to. Um, study this because, like I said, it's 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 very sacred, and I don't want to say anything incorrect. Uh, so, as we're going through the study, if you think that if you think I said anything uh, incorrect, please please uh, correct me, and we'll discuss it, and uh, perhaps I can give the logic how I came to that uh, conclusion. And if it's at least that logic is understandable, then we can continue. So uh, recently, um, you know, Elder Parminder has discussed the Sabbath um, you know, re regarding when somebody brought up the question, you know, can we or can we not take a test on the Sabbath? And, um, you know, and, you know, being a Seventh-day Adventist for, uh, you know, 30 plus years, Sabbath is one of those always uh, topics that people disagreed on what you can or cannot do on the Sabbath. And that's, that's what it all boiled down to, right? What can you do? What can you not do on the Sabbath? Um, and we always try to fill our Sabbath with things that we considered holy, even though there's disagreements on what the, what that is. You know, what is holy to do? What is unholy to do? And then when those things were done with in, in, in your day, you know, then it's like, okay, it's, you know, especially during the summer, right? Sabbath doesn't end till 8.30 or so. And say, okay, now what do I do? And there, there are some times when it's like you can't wait till Sabbath is over, right? Because you don't know what to, what else to do. So, you know, it, it can it can be challenging, but I think with a better understanding, uh, at least I've come to enjoy the Sabbath, and um, without wringing my fingers. Uh, not knowing or you know what to do or what not to do, and you know there's been discussions about recently where is Sabbath a, is it a principle or is it an example? Um, so let me put that out to you. What what do you think? Do you think Sabbath is an example or do you think Sabbath is a principle? Anybody? Kind of both. That's a conclusion that I came up with. That um, that it's both. And as um, as we go through the study, we can hopefully understand more why it's both. Um, you know, it's, it's it's interesting about the the Sabbath because it's a Sabbath. It's, it's a day of the Lord. It's it's, it's the Lord's Sabbath. Right? It's it's uh, but it's made for humanity, um, and, and I've I've come to see Sabbath. You know, we 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 say it's four and six, right? First four to four to God, and then about God or to God, and and then the last six about humanity. And to me, 
I didn't quite see it that way. I mean, it's, it's simplistically, yes, it's it's four and six, but I, I didn't quite see it that way, you know, because you know, it's, it's Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord, yet it was made for humanity, and I, I always thought that Sabbath was a the, the link that 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 linked the commandment that linked uh, between God and humanity, and that's how I, you know, that's how I see it. Um, and without that, without that Sabbath, um, and, and, the, and the the knowledge and, and the proper observance uh, of, the, of the Sabbath, you won't really come to know who your God is. Um, so I always thought it was, a, you know, more like a, a three and a half and a six and a half. It was always a, 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 that 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 link, that linked uh, the commandment that linked humanity to God and uh, you know I, I believe it's a principle that is that that we'll always learn how to observe it throughout eternity but I also I, I do believe that how it's written the way it's written on the in the fourth commandment it's an example uh, so, you know, when the Bible talks about the the, the fourth commandment right, in, in, in in Exodus, and then how uh, the Bible talks about uh, in heaven, there, you know, we'll meet uh, from new moon to new moon, from Sabbath to Sabbath. I don't think it's going to be the same how we observe in the new earth uh, as, as, as it is written in uh in the fourth commandment and so as we study that that will be uh more unfolded and so my my goal um it's a lofty goal i i believe is to take uh any bible verse or bible story and put it in a parable form and I, I one day I, I hope to I hope to get good as Elder Parmender, where he can take verses or take stories and put them line upon line and parabolize it and make it more easily understood. And sometimes I'm just amazed how how Elder Parmender does that. You know, he speaks on one subject. Um, and then he connects it, links it with whole different book, whole different chapter. Um, and yet it's all talking about the same thing. And that that has always amazed me about Elder Prem. And I, I hope I, I hope to get to that point one day. And this is what I would like to do with 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 the study of the Sabbath. Right? Put it in a parabolic form. Uh, and 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 look at it differently than than just thus saith the Lord. Okay. And and Paul, you know, Paul was a great orator, right? Great uh, rhetorical speaker, where he can where he can um, talk to anybody, and. And and he can kind of put himself into their position to see where they're coming from, and and reason with them from their point of view, yet preaching the gospel. And I think, you know, that's a wonderful way to, you know, when somebody somebody combats you with "Thus saith the Lord." You know, in, instead of butting heads, right? You can put in put yourself into their shoes to know where they're coming from, and then giving the gospel in a, in a language that they can understand. Uh, and I think that's a great rhetorical skill, which I don't have. Um, but I think it's it's a lofty goal to um, to get to. So that's what I'm what I'm trying to do. So this study is about the Sabbath in a parabolic form. 
so in first T, uh, 301, right, that's one T, 301, Ellen White says the only safety now is to search for the truth as revealed in the word of God, as for his treasure. The subjects of the Sabbath, the nature of humanity, and the testimony of Jesus are the great and important truth to be understood. These will prove, these will prove as an anchor to hold God's people in these perilous times. And as we were just discussing about the AI, right, um, I, I, the thought that came to my mind, one of the thoughts that came to my mind is of course, most of you know that I'm not computer savvy to, be, to begin with. But the way Christine presented it, uh, there was, it was understand, you know, understandable um, to a point necessary where I can understand what, you know, how, how, how dangerous it could be. Um, and you know, what, one of the Bible verses that came up is that there's nothing new under the sun. Right. So I was trying to figure out, okay, there's nothing new under the sun. In, in a, perhaps in a different form, how can we understand uh, the gospel or the Bible? Somewhere, you know, back in time, you know, was there anything written about AI? No, I, I, I don't know the answer, but that was just a thought that was coming to my mind because there's nothing new under the sun. But as Ellen White said, there's the subjects of the Sabbath, the nature of humanity, and the testimony of Jesus. Those are the three things that, right, that prove as an anchor to hold God's people in these perilous times. And I, I believe that right now we are living in a perilous time, right, especially with this AI. So if, we're, uh, if we are to understand the nature of humanity, which I think we do understand it better than, you know, better than we did you know, a few years ago. Uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of presentations that Elder Prime Minister did and that I myself did um, last year of nature of humanity, and so that's why, you know, I, I want to tackle this issue of Sabbath, and also hopefully I'll, I'll get to the testimony of Jesus, because these are the anchor to hold. Um, uh, to hold God's people in, in these perilous times, especially when we come upon subjects like AI that we don't really understand. So also uh, on, in uh, EGW 1903, um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what all these, I, I, I did look it up at one time, but I didn't write them down. So I don't remember what they, what they mean, but 18 LTMS, and MS 169, 1903, paragraph four. It says, the great test that will distinguish those who keep the commandments of God from those who transgress God's law is the Sabbath observance. And I've come to the conclusion that our great test is still the Sabbath observance. Now I know that we don't, the Sabbath observance is not about a day. The great test, the Sunday law test is not about a day, not about whether you worship on a Sunday or whether you worship on a Saturday, Sabbath, the true Sabbath, right? We, we know now that's not what it is. But according to, to Ellen White, it's, the great test that will distinguish those who keep the commandments of God from those who transgress God's law is Sabbath observance. So if that is still true, which I believe it is still true, and we know that it's not about a day of worship, then that Sabbath observance must be, as I suggest, about something else. And so as we go through this study, I, I hope to present what that something else is. 
And then 19 LTMS, uh, MS 110, 1904, paragraph 58. It says, the vain glory and the oppression seen in the course pursued by the heathen king Nebuchadnezzar are and being and will continue to be manifested in our day. History will repeat itself. In this age, the great test will be upon the point of Sabbath observance. Again, to emphasize in our day, right? That the great test will be upon the point of Sabbath observance. So again, I suggest to you, yes, it's not about a day, not about Sunday worship, it's not about a Saturday worship, but it is about the Sabbath observance. And I think we need to come to a conclusion, understandable conclusion of what that Sabbath observance is. And so that's what I hope to present throughout this study. So in one of the, uh, the parable methodology, right, um, it's, the, it's, it's the, the rule of first mention. We, we we look at the rule of first mention. Where where is the first mention of of, of Sabbath? And that is uh, in Exodus sixteen twenty three. Okay, Exodus sixteen twenty three, and the the first mention of Sabbath now. As, as I'm going to explain later on, we 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 know that the first mention of the seventh day was in Genesis, but the word Sabbath was not mentioned until Exodus sixteen twenty three, and so I looked up the word Sabbath in the concordance, and it's H seven six seven six. And which led, led me to H7673. And so H7673, it's a primary root. Uh, and it means to uh, repose, uh, desist from exertion. It means to cease, cease and desist, to rest. And this word, to rest or to cease is the same word that's used in Genesis 2, uh, two uh, uh, verses 2 and 3, and uh, Genesis 8, 22. So, so if, we go, if we go to Exodus 16, 23, Okay. Oh, good. I'll read it in the chat. It says, and he said unto them, thank you, Christine. Uh, and he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said, tomorrow is the rest on the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you shall bake to today and see that which you'll see and that which remaineth overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. So we're going to be, if you have your Bibles open, uh, we're going to refer a lot to this verse uh, in, in Exodus 23. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Exodus 16, 23. We're going to refer back to this verse. So I, I, so I suggest you would have your Bibles open so that you can continue referring uh, and, 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 and looking at this verse. So in, in Genesis 8.22, right, if you go to Genesis 8.22, says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. 
Well, that same word, cease, is the same word used in Genesis 2, 3, to rest. So, to rest, to cease, the Sabbath, it all means the same thing. To repose, desist from exertion, cease and desist. To, so basically, stop. So this is what, what, what Sabbath is. So in the rule of first mention is, is just to, to stop. So, so we, I think we need to understand what that what that means is to stop, to cease, okay, to rest. So in Genesis, as I mentioned before, Genesis 2, 20, uh, 2 and 3, um, H seven H seven six seven three. Okay. So let's go to Genesis two twenty three. Genesis two twenty three. Um, I think it's Genesis. No. Genesis 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. So that rest, the seventh day, cease, Sabbath, they're all synonymous. So, so the word seventh, so now when we look at the word seventh, it's H7673, no, I'm sorry, H7637, which led me to H7657, which led me to H7651, which led me to the, the primary root of 7650. And the seventh means to be complete but used only as a denominator from 87651. So you can say to seven oneself, I mean, we see that as a number, right? But we can seven oneself, which means to swear, to charge, or oath. So the root for swear is, is seven, is, is the same. But symbolically, we also means that, you know, when we say seven, that's also perfection. So seven is a perfect number. So seven, six, five, zero is a primary cardinal number, but it's also seven as the sacred full. It's the full one. It's sacred. It's, it's to charge, to charge an oath. So, no, I don't, I don't yet fully understand you know, all the connections here between seven, seven, seventh, Sabbath, rest, cease, desist, perfection, being full, complete. So I, I you know, I, I, it's, I'm still exploring that. So I, I don't know oh, the, the, the whole meaning yet, but this is the Sabbath. And, you know, as I was digging for hit treasure, this is what I found, but I'm sure this is only the, you know, very surface. And I probably dug only a, a foot deep into the, into the, into the earth and to find this hit treasure. And there's still a lot more to dig and understand. So Exodus 31.15. Exodus, if you go to Exodus 31.15, it's, it's the, the first mention of actually connecting Sabbath to the seventh day. Okay, so if we go to Exodus, let's see, 31. Thirty-one fifteen. 
Yeah, Exodus 31, 15, and it says, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, they shall surely be put to death. So the seventh, so according to and what I found, the seventh Sabbath rest, you know, it's it's all very similar according to the concordance. They're, they're all they're all connected, they're all related. But this is the first mention of where the the scripture actually connects the Sabbath to the seventh day. So if you would if you would participate now, okay. Well, let's let's read first. Let's see. Let's read. Let's compare and contrast. That's another right. That's another parabolic model, right? Compare, comparing and contrasting. Um, Genesis two, two and three, to to um, the Exodus uh, twenty eight through eleven. But those are the two where. Uh, Sabbath is mentioned, right? So would somebody like to read Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3? And would somebody like to read Exodus 20, 8 through 11, please? I could read that, though. Thank you, Francisco. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Okay, thank you. So that's the Sabbath of Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3. Now, the Sabbath of Exodus 20, which we know is the fourth commandment, 8 through 11. Would somebody also read that, please? Exodus 20, verse what again, Phil? Sorry. 8, eight through 11. Uh, 8. Um, hold on one, one second. Okay, sorry about the noise in my background. All right, remember the Sabbath day to keep to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Into it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant, nor thy, sorry, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant nor the cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed us the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, thank you. So You're very welcome. Let's um, let's compare and contrast uh, between the Sabbath, as is written in Genesis two and two uh, verses two and three, and the Sabbath of Exodus twenty uh, eight to eleven, um, as we have just read. So.
Okay, if we, are to, if we are to compare and contrast these two, and anything that comes to mind. Well, it's okay. the seventh day, that's for definite. It's a specific day, it's the seventh day. I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, God was talking about a specific day, the seventh day. Okay. As we, yes, okay, as we have mentioned, yes, good. And... Anything else? One that one that immediately immediately came to my mind uh, when I was uh, studying this. When they came to, immediately to my mind was this. Can you can you see that? Yeah. So Genesis, the seventh day, the Sabbath was before sin, and the Sabbath of um, Exodus was after sin. Can, you, can, can everybody see that? Um, yeah. so yes. I, can you clarify what the P means? With the oh. Line of it. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if it's Greek or Latin or, but this is, this is before. Okay. And like, like ante, and this is like uh, after, like post. Oh, perfect. Thank yeah. you. So like before sin, after sin. <laughs> Got it. It also mentions uh, God's work and what he had done in, on, in Genesis 2, Genesis 2, 2, and 2, 3. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so here, can I, can I say God rested? Yeah. And here, can I say, yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. And if we're remembering the Sabbath day, like the original one, to keep it holy, we're remembering what God did on that that last day, on that seventh day. So resting as God did. Yes. So how should we put that? So God rested in Genesis, but the rest... So yeah. remember, so remember the remember the Sabbath day, mm -hmm. and to keep it holy. Okay. So, yeah, so we're like, remembering as God. So we're resting as God rested. So we're remembering yes. that God rested. So we need to rest. Right. So, so, so we know it's more than just physical rest, and and we'll we'll touch that a little later on, but you know we know it's more than a physical rest because. Well, Adam was created on the sixth day. He didn't do a, 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 a lick of work, and yet he was he was entered into the into God's rest. So, so yeah. So we need to we'll figure all that out as as we go. Another thing that I um, I think we're imitating uh, we're imitating God's uh, char uh, character yeah. by by resting like He rested. 
So we're imitating right. his his uh, his image, his his character. That's good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one thing I find interesting is God did all the work. Yeah. And yet we're the rest. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I find that quite interesting. Um, another thing that I that I um, remember this means before. Um This means after. Right? Yeah. So the Sabbath of Genesis was before patriarchy and Sabbath of Exodus was after patriarchy. Sarah says, in Genesis, God didn't give instructions on how to keep it, but we see that in Exodus. So God, okay. God didn't need to give example in Genesis because he was right. the example because God was the example. Right. Okay, let's see. And then Tori says God gave the example as per his usual, as per usual, God's usual. Yeah. Because God gave the example. Okay, good. Maybe because in Genesis, before sin, God was a visual example. And then, and um, this is just a thought, I, you don't have to change what you put, but in Exodus, the, uh, we don't have God as a visual example because we're disconnected from God. So God has to give us a verbal example, uh, has to give us verbal clues on how to um celebrate seven mm -hmm. okay good yeah okay and that goes to so in genesis we're connected with god because it's before sin right and in exodus it's after sin so we're not connected that same connection okay very good yeah So another thing that I that I came up with is, and it goes along with patriarchy. So true. Right. You know, Phil, when you first asked the question. Is the Sabbath, um, what was it, a law, you said? Is the Sabbath a law or a principle? Is it, yeah, principle or example. Example. And it made me want to look that up. Um, and a, a law, like it's in the Ten Commandments, is a universal principle. And that universal principle has properties between relationships. And I was thinking about how God wants us to have that principle, that relationship with him or them, I should say. So I was kind of thinking about that as a principle. Um, and we lost, like Christine said, we lost sight of the example following sin. We lost sight of our example. So we had to be given instruction again on how to attain it. Yes. Yeah. So we, we lost that relationship uh, yeah. because of sin um, where God was before sin, humanity and God were together. But after sin, sin separated. And so now he, now God had to give an example for that, for that time, for a, for a, a patriarchal time, uh, God has to give an example for a patriarchal time, for the second for sexism time, and another thing is uh, 
right? So all these entered, right, if, if, right all, all these like this commandment, like entered after sin, right? And, uh, and all this, gen, uh, Sabbath of Genesis too, was before sin. So we we can you know we, we can plug in you know we can plug in what Elder Tess has taught us you know regarding the the sin sins of um, Eve sins of uh, Ham uh, sins of uh, Cain right we, we we could all plug this in, in into the Sabbath and to see how the Sabbath observance, the correct sa Sabbath observance, uh, is, 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 is I, I believe, and I suggest it's, it's important, as Ellen White put it, um, to pass our test. And, you no, know, in, in, And and this one I I I am not quite I'm not quite certain how to um, understand this, but um, and, and perhaps if you're inspired or you have you have a reasoning, you can probably make me make me understand this a little better. But but um, you know the seventh day, right? It says God. Can, can you see this? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's God cease, because that's what Sabbath means, right? Desist. But here, after, okay, after the sin, it says, um, John, I'll put John 5. 17. Okay. So John 5, 17, basically what it says, um, my father worketh, and it is regarding the Sabbath. If somebody would like to read the whole verse. I'll go ahead and read it. John 5, 17? Yes. Okay. Says, but Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Yeah, and this was in regard, this was in regard to, um, oh, what was the story? I can't, what was the story? Uh, Jesus, well, Christ heals the impotent man, and Christ breaks the Sabbath, and then the top of my thing it says equality with God in nature. That's a topic before seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it, but it was um, when Jesus healed and did all these good work um, on the Sabbath. Uh, and he says, my father worked with, you know, hitherto. So, you know, because of our, because of our sinful condition, uh, are we, I said, I, said I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things, you know, I, and because God does not want us to want to leave us in these conditions, I know there's a parable method in there somewhere. There's a parable um, uh, lesson. But if, if we were to take that literally, are, are we making God work on a day that, you know, he wasn't supposed, God wasn't supposed to work because of our degenerative conditions? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I know there's a parable lesson in that my, you know, my father worketh hitherto on the Sabbath. I do know so, that we're not supposed to be 
stopping to help other people. Like a, lo a lot of um, SDA go out and to like uh, care homes and stuff like that on the Sabbath, right? So we're not supposed mm -hmm. to be stopping helping other people. We are probably we're supposed to stop, you know, working in the garden, uh, gathering food, gathering wood, you know, going to work, uh, in, you know, in our jobs, things like that. But we're not supposed to stop helping other people. Correct. Correct. Yes. I. I yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. I understand. I understand that. But what I, what I was saying is, before sin, there was you know there would be no reason. Okay, to help or to heal the, True. you know, before True. sin. So because of our degenerate condition, is is God not getting the rest that he desired because of our own sinful condition? Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, though. Both yeah. what you and Christine just shared, because... I was thinking God is always there for us when we need to pray to God. So he's 24-7 yeah. available for humanity always. So that's not a rest. If yeah. you always, right? Right. Um, and you made a good point there, Phil, because pre-sin, God wouldn't need to be on 911 duty constantly for humanity because everything would have been going in its appropriate cycle um yeah i don't know but that's what i was thinking yeah yeah so so you no know, my suggestion is that you know really using our slow brain you know before before we do things you know, are, are, are we make, I don't know, the making is the right word, but let's just say, are we making God do things that he rather not, God rather not do, they rather not do? And think twice about the things that we say and do. So use our slow brain to really check our emotions, our thoughts, our affections, our words and our habits. So we'll disappoint the enemy and not disappoint God and having having them work extra hard. Hey, Phil? Yes. I just have a thought. Um, as, as I've been looking at everything that, that we've been learning in the movement, and, and um, I think of the Sabbath, I think that the Sabbath represents... To me, it represents the pinnacle of relationship, and that's relationship with God and man. And you brought it out when you talked about the seventh day right there in in uh, in Genesis in the beginning, because after Adam was created, he rested, but that rest was he was able to enter into a relationship with Adam, and. And so if we if we don't lose sight of the fact that that it's all about relationship, then it helps us to explain the work that that God is having to do 24 seven now. And it also helps me to understand, as you pointed out, you know, if you look at it superficially and I, I don't want to use the word superficially, but if you look at it one way, you see that the, the, the Ten Commandments, you see the four and the six. But depending on which set of glasses you wear. Um, and I won't take the time to do it now, but we can actually see that all 10 of the commandments point to God and all 10 of the commandments point to man. All 10 of them, they really do. And um, and it, it, it's it's really important. I mean, even just to jump to the jump to the to the to the chase on, on the second commandment, you know, God says we're not supposed to supposed to bow down or worship anything, in, you know, at all. And and um, and he tells us that, and yet you realize that God only made one thing in the entire universe in His own image, and that was humanity. And so it's all about entering into relationship with humanity, and and even and this is the fourth commandment. It does talk about, it talks about you know, 
to all the different relationships that are that are there, whether it's someone you know with a stranger uh, within your gates. And it's I think that that's part part of a key to me as our as we go forward in general. Yes, uh, and thank you for for mentioning that because we are going to break down uh, that commandment and see see what they what those commandment all those you said um, manservant maid servant strangers yeah you know, we're going to break that down and, and and go through those and see what they mean to us so yeah so thank you for yeah thank you everybody for participating I sure uh, appreciate it so um another thing that we were taught uh, when we do parable methodology, when we use parable methodology, okay, we did uh, the, the rule of first mention, and we're, you know we broke that down. The other uh, other rule um, we talk about parable methodology is um, context, right? putting putting the the verses, uh, the, the scriptural verses in its proper context. So. When we look at the, the Sabbath of Exodus 20, uh, 8 through 11, the Sabbath after, um, after sin, what were the context? W where were the Israelites? What, what just happened to the Israelites? What, what was the scenario that, that, that this uh, fourth commandment was made? Captivity, slavery. Okay, captivity. Well, they just came out of captivity, but okay, right. But yeah. but but that but that's but that's correct because because where was what where, where was their mind? Where was their mind? In captivity. In captivity. Physically, they, they came out because um, you know Moses led them out, but but mind wise, right, they were still in, in captivity. Right. So they just came out of Egypt. Um, this, this this God, uh, they they really don't know because they have been in Egypt for a long time, and probably in Egypt, uh, I'm thinking that they didn't they probably didn't observe the Sabbath, which that relationship is, is very important. So they forgot who God was. And but they just see this great God who just annihilated the Egyptians, right? And this it just Egyptians were the the powerhouse uh, of that day, right? They they were the ruler uh, of the world, and this this God you know through Moses just just annihilated them, uh, they, and they didn't even have to lift a finger. You know, God sent the plagues, and bam. Now it, it was done, right? So they say. So they see this great God, right? So, so they see this uh, unseen, all powerful God, more powerful than their Egyptian gods that they just you know, came out of. So their whole mindset, right, is is a patriarchal mindset. It's a it's a um, apis bull mindset, right? I mean, it's better than an apis bull mindset. Because this God just defeated the apis bull, right? So, but but that's the but they don't but they have no other image of God other than apis bull, who in their minds uh, was the most powerful God. So they so they give this tribute to this God as the apis bull. I, I suppose the apis bull of all apis bulls, right? God who just annihilated. Uh, the enemy just freed them from captivity, so so their whole mindset is still this this apis bull, right? Um, so I, I I you know as I was doing this study, I, I wondered you know so how many times does Moses go up to the mountain? Is it twice? Twice, yeah. So, so Moses went up to the mountain twice to receive the Ten Commandments, and 
So the for, so for the first tablets and the first ta first tablets and the first commandments, uh, who cut the rocks out? First commandment. God did. God did. God is the God is the one who cut out the rock and 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 wrote the commandments. And Moses coming down, seeing this, um, seeing the the revelry that was going on, right, he smashed that tablet. So I would, I'm thinking, we really never know what was written on those first tablets or how it was written on the first tablet right that's true because we only know we only have the record of the second tablet what was written on the second tablet and the second tablet who cut out the stone in the second who cut out the second tablet god cut out the first and who cut out the second tablet? Moses. Moses did. So here was the um, humanity and God working together. Right? First, God worked all by himself by creating these, these tablets and, and writing the instructions, writing the Ten Commandments, which, which Moses smashed. So, you know, my thought was, wow. You know, what was written? Maybe it was a similar thing, but how was it written? Because did did God change the way things were written on the second tablet after after you know after they observed the revelry and, and the mindset of patriarchal mindset of um, of the of the Israelites, of the atheist bull mindset? So you know the, because the way that is written, um uh, on the second tablet, you can see the patriarchy, the sexism, the racism that is in the fourth commandment in, in a, from that point of view. And perhaps the, the, the first, I don't know, but those, those are the thoughts that's coming to my mind. Perhaps the first tablet wasn't written that way. So but this, but we know what we know. Uh, we have a, a, a record of how it was written after the revelry, after the apes, the building of the calves, the, the molten calves, after bowing down um, and making an image to the apes bull, which we said was all of this, right? Is patriarchy, sexism, racism. Now, if, if we look at another thing that I, I, I'm going to eventually, because this, to me, this, this study of Sabbath is a work in progress. And like I said, I, I probably only dug a, a foot deep and found some wonderful treasures. But, but in this, um, in this uh, commandment, The, 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 um, the fourth commandment of Exodus. How many symbols can you find? Uh, just, 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 in, just numbers. You know, because remember, numbers are symbols, right? So numbers are symbols. So just in this fourth commandment, how many numbers can you find that are symbolic? Okay. Are you going off a specific verse? No, just just uh, just the symbols that you find as that, that are numbers. For example, the the one that comes first to mind is number four. It's the fourth commandment, right? And and I and, and we know we have an idea what four means, right? Yeah. So. So, number, so right away we find number four. And, and we can just do a whole study on that. 
Yeah. So is there any, any other number that you find? Well, the six for the There's six, a six days. You know, six day. And then the seven for the seventh day. Seventh and seventh day. How about num number 46, restoration? 46? Uh, well, in the, well, in the Ten Commandments, yes, you find four six in the ten the whole, whole the whole of the Ten Commandments. True. Okay. What about uh, four? Yeah. So you so we so we find four. We find six. We find seven. We find four and six. Uh, we find ten, which is a which is a uh, number ten, right? The, the Ten Commandments. There, there's ten. Um. And and ten is a symbol of what? Test. Yeah. Test. 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 Ten is the symbol of a test, and the Sabbath is the great test. So I so so I know that just in this fourth commandment and just this symbol, there's just so much that we can we can explore just in this one commandment, and which I uh, hope to do. Um, as I continue to, Phil, uh, how about the number twenty five twenty? You know, it's a big topic. But the twenty five twenty in the in the Ten Commandments or, or the Fourth Commandment specifically in the Fourth Commandments. You know, well, the uh, rest uh, of the land. Okay, twenty five twenty. I'll write that down. Yeah, so I'm writing down. Also, I have a piece of paper here. I'm writing down all the different. Uh, suggestions that as I explore this, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look into, but thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So just if, just in this commandment and also in the 10 commandments, we know there's a whole, whole symbolic meaning to like number 10, the test and the fourth commandment being the test, the Sabbath observance and the relationship, the Sabbath observance of the, the being the relationship that we have with God. So you know, th these are a lot of things that I, I think that we need to, to think about as we observe the Sabbath. What, it, what does it really mean? I was thinking about the number 12, too, because he taught the 12 disciples how to worship um, God, Jesus, Jesus did, because they, too, were all full of preconceived ideas and opinions um, from being in the Jewish institution. Yes, which were really Hellenized as you have taught yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, good. So all these are excellent points. So uh, I'll continue looking into these. So remember the Sabbath day, Elder Parminder, you know, I, 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 and I don't remember the exact order that uh, Elder Parminder put this in, but he said, but he wrote it on the board. It says parable equals a prophecy equals Jesus equals Sabbath. Do we, do we remember that? Yes. Yeah. Like I said, I, I might have the wrong order, but, if they, they, but I, the order really doesn't matter. If they're all equal to one another. So parable equals prophecy equals Jesus equals Sabbath. So when we're talking, about, when we're studying the Sabbath, we're studying parables, we're studying prophecy, yes, but we're studying Jesus. And um, that is, to, to me, is exciting. And, and, and you know, when, when most Christians, and even Seventh-day Adventists, when they talk about Jesus, you know, they talk about Jesus as is as Jesus is contained in this the four gospels, right? Uh, and that's the that's the Jesus that that most of the Christians know. But Ellen White says in numerous places in Desire of Ages 23.2, uh, Desire of Ages 4 477.3, uh, Review and Herald, April 3rd, 9, uh, 1894, and paragraph six and many, many other places. Uh, this is how um, Ellen White refers to Jesus. It says, Jesus is equal to 
types, shadows, symbols. And that's what she says, types, shadows, and symbols. And we can and we can also mention figures. So like when the Jews of ancient Israel, when they made sacrifices that pointed to the Messiah, but they forgot the meaning of the sacrifices, right? they forgot Jesus. So they forgot the relationship that they were having with their own God. And they and they continue to make mean, meaningless sacrifices because there was no relationship between what they there was there was a, a disconnect between what they were doing and why they were doing what they were doing. Yeah. It's like a commodity. They made Jesus a commodity of gain. You know, because yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can see that even today, the way they politically use Christianity and Jesus for an agenda of gain, monetary gain. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He was um, Jesus to most Christians today, uh, nothing more than a, a lucky charm or, or a, a lucky medallion. Uh, someone in, who would give them good luck uh, or good fortunes. Um, and most Christians do, don't have a clue um, who or what Jesus is. Because Jesus is, like I said, is in, is in types, shadows, symbols. And again, Ellen White doesn't say the word figures, but we can put in the word figure. Um, because all those all those figures, uh, they have meaning, and they all symbolize Jesus. Well, yes, I'm still reminded of the verse when Jesus says, "If you have done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me," and that that ties it all together with with his relationship to humanity, and right right there, yeah, yes. And so, yeah, and so you bring up a good point, which we're going to continue a little bit later, is the who are the least it, 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 for our time. If this, if this um, fourth commandment is an example for their time, who or what is it example for, for our time? So... If, if, if we look at um, the fourth command, the, the way it is written, it, it's written uh, both uh, in a, in a cataf cat cataphatic model and an apophatic, apopathic model. Well, those are tongue twisters. Cataphatic and apophatic. Now, cataphatic is the knowledge of God obtained through positive affirmation where apophatic is a knowledge of God obtained through negative or negation. So if, if, if we look at the, um, the Sabbath commandment of the fourth commandment, right? It, it, it's, it's written in both, um, both languages in both uh, cataphatic and apophatic uh, language. So, if we're, if we're to see the, so what, so what was written in a, in a cataphatic language? So, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor, do all thy work. Okay? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So, these are all... Uh, in, in a, a cataphatic language, which is a uh, through through positive language, through affirming. It also is written the apophatic, uh, which is a, a, a knowledge obtained through negation, the nots, the don'ts. So in it, thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy servant, nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, 
nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So this, so there's there's both languages. So the cataphatic language, right? in six days, Lord made heaven, the earth, the sea, all that in them is, rest of the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay? This is all a cataphatic language and a positive affirming language. So if we, if, we, if we were to replace the language, replace the apophatic language with a, with a cataphatic, so replace all the don'ts and uh, do nots uh, to the do's or the cataphatic affirming language, uh, it, would look, it would look something like this. So seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Therefore, and, the, and, I, and I used all my words of, of, of how I would see the, this, this commandment. Uh, so seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Therefore, the patriarchs, because it was the patriarchs who, who ruled the house. So, the, so therefore, the patriarchs, whoever that they might be, cease and desist, provide rest for your children, provide rest for your slaves, let your cattle take a break and lay down, and let the strangers give them a place to lie down and put their feet up, so that all will enjoy the same opportunity to cease and desist. So, so that is the, the cataphatic la uh, the language of what, what the fourth commandment might look like. So we know, because we know, you know it, 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 the language is, is, is written in, in, the, in the view of, of, of a patriarch. So, in the context of Exodus 16.23, where we said it was the first mention of the word Sabbath, um, they just came out of Egypt. Uh, they're in the wilderness, and the Israelites were murmuring against Moses and Aaron. And why were they, what, what was the main reason that they were uh, complaining against uh, Moses and Aaron? What were they feeling? Or what were they complaining about? Food and water, they were scared? Yeah, well, well initially, well, yeah, water was a little bit later. That's true. But initially, because they were hungry, right? they were starving. So the Lord said to them that God would raise, rain bread from heaven. The people were to gather the, the omer per person, bread, every morning, eat it the same day, leave nothing for the next day, and then start the process all over again from the first day to the sixth day. So from the first day to the sixth day, every person was to gather an omer of bread that rained down from heaven. But on the sixth day, the people were to gather a double portion per person. So that's two omers per person to be eaten both on the sixth day and the seventh day, because on the seventh day, there will be no bread raining down from heaven. So from the first day to the sixth day, if any, if any bread were left over from the previous day, or if any were saved for the next day, the leftover bread would be bread with worms and it would stink, right? It would cause a stench. It would rot in one day. But on the sixth day, the people were to, people required it wasn't just a, a suggestion it was they were required to gather a double portion of their bread on the sixth day so double portion would um, give them food for the sixth day and for the seventh day and the bread that was left over 
but the next day, which was the seventh day, even though like like any all the other days, if you left the bread over for the next day, it would breed worms and stink. But if when you did it on the sixth day and you left it for the seventh day, it would not stink and it would not breed worms. So no. oh sorry. Yeah, so no bread was no bread was provided on the seventh day. Uh, so go ahead, Susan. Well, when you were sharing that, I just was thinking that we are, that's part of our preparation day. Even I think our preparation day is a little askew, meaning um, I believe the original, the original way was Sunday, let's say, is the first day of your preparation, Tuesday, the second day, third, Wednesday, the third. Thursday the 4th or anyway you get the idea and and so what I was thinking is that um we are each to prepare and bread is a message bread symbolizes a message so we are each to try to get messages by Friday so that we have messages and food to give on the sabbath and it's sort of like you have to give away what you have or you can't get any more M meaning you can't just hoard it and keep it you have to be able to give it out right because love is something that you have to give away you can't hold it within and so if you did keep any leftover you could see why it would go bad because uh bread in due season uh food in good in due season so it's specially blessed messages that we could all have to share on the sabbath day that's what i was was thinking while you were sharing that yes very good thank you for bringing up those points yeah um, because symbolically, we know that bread means message. Uh, and, and we have, and Ellen White has told us, and we have just uh, as previously stated, that Jesus is shown in types, shadows, symbols, figures. So bread is the message, but, but who, who also is the bread? Christ is the bread from heaven. Right. So Christ is the bread from heaven. And this was the problem that the Jews were having when Jesus said, uh, you know, eat, you, you eat my flesh and, and drink my blood. Uh, and they didn't understand the connection, but he was saying then with eating the manna, because by eating the manna, they weren't just eating bread, they were actually eating Jesus. Um, and and so again because they were not having a relationship with their god there was a disconnect between eating the bread in uh eating manna in the wilderness and drinking jesus's blood and eating jesus's flesh but in order to but we to understand that correctly that means to to have a a, a relationship uh, with with our God, and uh, so I, I, you know, I think that's the the important thing about the Sabbath. Uh, as Bob has mentioned, you know, all all of those, the Ten Commandments, you know, all of them could be referring to God, all of them could be referring to humanity. But as when Ellen White when she saw the Ten Commandments, the Ark was open to her and she saw the Ten Commandments, it's the fourth that shined out to her, right? It's, it's, it's the one that was the, the brightest. It was glowing. Um, and so I, I, I believe that it's the, the Sabbath that really connects and have us to understand uh, what that relationship is supposed to look like uh, between between God and humanity, and I think that's why she said, you know, the the three things that hold that holds anchor is uh, is the nature of 
human the study of nature of humanity, the Sabbath, and the testimony uh, of uh, of Jesus. And those three, and I've not specifically these things, but when Elder Parminder mentions three, he goes he goes to the the Gospels, you know the the three angels message, and that's why I said he, I mean he connects. Uh, you know all, all of those, and uh, and it's amazing what Elder Parminder can do with with specifically the, the number three. Amen. I was thinking when you were saying that the Sabbath glows, how um, Ellen White describes that the witnesses for God that go forth with the gospel message. You know the three angels' message. Their faces will be lighted all aglow, um, and. I was thinking the more we understand these subjects, like what you're bringing out, the more it's going to um, make our characters more like Christ. The more that we digest these messages, the more we might glow with this understanding. And when Stephen was stoned, he, he was glowing. His face was glow, glowing like an angel. So he had this deep understanding that we're trying to acquire. And I really appreciate your study. It's it's very thought provoking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it, it was to me as I as I was uh, gathering these information. Uh, uh, Phil? Yes. Uh, just a thought, because I did, as you were speaking about the food that the Israelites we're expecting you made a compare and contrast to the New Testament uh, with the food. Well, the food represents the spiritual food. And what we've been taught is not literal. We go from literal to spiritual. And I'm learning this as well. I mean, the language that we need to understand from literal to spiritual. So the literal would be what we recognize on this earth. It's, it's let's put it in a way of uh, what humans recognize on this earth is, is the literal. We see it, we see it in the stories in the Bible. And that's the way Jesus taught through the methodology, through the stories, the examples, and how he was teaching. But he went from literal to spiritual. It was to be applied in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly realm. So yes. I, I think of it with what you've written on the board there, because these are the tests, yes, the patriarchy, the sexism, the racism, cease and desist for worshiping the Sabbath. But how do we see that played out in the spiritual realm? Because it's in the heart. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I will give you a new heart and a new mind so that you understand seeing what the literal says on earth, but you're going to the spiritual because the spiritual it's written on your heart. Yes. I hope I said that right. Others might have some thought on this, but that verse just sticks in my mind. Ezekiel 36, 26. Because that is, that is the new heart in that verse that God gives us to understand the spiritual realm. Yes, very good. Yeah, th th yeah thank you. The, the new heart, as you said, it's the uh, the spiritual realm. That it, it has to be, it has to go from our our head um, down to our hearts. Yes, and the so, natural to the spiritual, and that's the way Elder Parmender bring, brings those principles out or those thoughts out from the literal to the spiritual. Yes, thank you for bringing that out from the literal to the spiritual. Yes. Yes, or natural, natural to the spiritual. Yeah, natural to the spiritual. He uses NS, NS. I know I, 
I've been listening to those studies and it's, it, it's powerful. So thank you. Well, yeah, thank you. Natural to spiritual, yes. Now, so as, as I as I was um, looking at this, the first mention of the Sabbath in Exodus 16, verse 23. The one that, let's see. The one that came to my mind is Matthew 25. So, what was what were we what would what were we to do on the sixth day? So so in so in, in Matthew 25, right? In Matthew 25, how many groups of people do you have? Well, let's see. So so you so you got you got the ten virgins. Right, and the ten virgins represent who? God's people. Right, God's people. Right. So, in those ten virgins, how many groups do you have? Two. You have two groups. You have the foolish and the wise. Right. So, what in in, in Exodus sixteen twenty three? What was um, what were they required to do on the sixth day? Repeat that verse, please. Yeah, in, in Exodus sixteen twenty three, the one we just read. On the sixth day, what, what were, were the, the people required, required to do? do? They were to gather their portion for that sixth. So that's enough for the seven. Right. So they were supposed to gather double, double portion. portion. Right? So did, did everybody gather double portion? Like they were like they were told to. No. No. Because there did. were there were some who did not gather double portion because if you if you continue reading that story, let's see Exodus sixteen twenty three. Let me go to that real quick. Exodus sixteen twenty three. Let's see. Exodus sixteen twenty three. Exodus sixteen twenty three. Okay, if you could read verse twenty seven. Gallery 27, 16, Exodus 16, verse 27. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. They found none. Thank you. Thank you for reading that. Yeah, and, and so not everybody gathered double portion like they were required to on the sixth day. And they went out on the seventh day, and they found none. So immediately, this reminded me of the ten virgins of Matthew 25. Because in Matthew 25, now I, I, I haven't um, finished this thought out yet, but in Matthew 25, you got the wise and the foolish. You, you have the wise that gathered double portion of oil because you have portion in the flask and portion in the lamp. So when the lamp went out, they can fill the lamp with the oil that was in the flask. Right? So they had double portion. So they rested. They were, they were sustained. So even though they all went to sleep, the foolish and the wise, they all went to sleep because the wise gathered double portion. They were able to rest. They were and they were sustained uh, because they had a um, uh, double portion of oil. 
and they were able to enter uh, enter the, the marriage feast. Whereas the fools, the foolish virgins, they only gathered single, enough for the lamp. And, and, and they too rested because they went to sleep. But when the time came, because they did not have oil um, in the flask, they, they, they were unsustained. Um, they looked for more, like like they like the, the Hebrews did uh, on the seventh day. They went out and found none, and so these foolish virgins went out um, to the market. And it doesn't really say whether they found none or not, found some or not. Um, but I'm I'm thinking they didn't find any, and they came to the, you know, they they came to the wedding feast uh, unprepared, and e e even if they had found some oil, because they went out searching, they were late, and the door was already closed, and so they were unable to enter, and. Ellen White says that this, um, you know, the parable of the ten virgins, uh, will repeat. It, it went through the um, the first time through the Millerite history, and she said this parable will repeat. So it will repeat in our time. So. Keeping that in mind, that, that, that the parable of the ten virgin is going to repeat uh, in our time. Let's uh, let's let's see. Let's do a little exercise. The sixth day. Uh, the seventh day. So on the sixth day, what are we? Um, it, okay, I'll, I'll just put. So seventh day is the Sabbath, right? So the seventh day is the Sabbath. What what are we required to do on the sixth day? Gather. Be right. ready and prepare for the Sabbath. Okay, so prepare. So Right, we're supposed to prepare for the Sabbath. Okay. So we're supposed to prepare for the Sabbath on the sixth day, which means okay, we work, right? Or labor. So on the seventh, we're supposed to do what? If we work labor on the sixth, on the seventh, we rest. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, all right. Um, if we are to, so according to what we just read on uh, Exodus. 1623. Okay. So all these days in the sixth day, we're supposed to gather, right? And, and how much are you supposed to gather on the sixth day? Twice as much. Okay, so twice. It's double. Okay, two times. And, oops. Maybe I'll put it this way. Double portion. So on the seventh day, are you supposed to go out and look? No. No. So you should be, be able to be sustained 
okay? And um, sustained on the double portion. Uh, and you're not, you're not supposed to look for any more. Okay. So double portion, two omers. So when you gather double or two omers and you're on the sixth day, you're able to lay up. Right? Lay yeah. up two omers. An omer is a heap. It's a heap, it says, or a, or a sheath. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, a, a, heap, a heap as an H E A P, heap? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Because uh, they were commanded to do that, you know, for the following generations, even it, it, as you go on in that same Exodus. And it comes to a test at the end, just like you brought up with the 10 virgins, the 10 being a test, um, because it was something they were supposed to continually do. Okay. I'll put it over here. Heap. Hey, Phil. Yeah. Yes. The way you've got this written on the board, you've got the sixth day, and then you got the vertical line, and then you got the seventh day. And it and at one level, my mind reverts to looking at all the all of the, what humanity individually and corporately has to do before the close of probation. So I see that line as a close of probation, and I see six millenniums before, and then the seventh millennium will be on the new will be in in in, in heaven. For those thousand years it's a millennial sabbath basically uh, well i'm glad you brought that up because i put that in my notes uh, but i didn't I, I wasn't i was not going to present it even though it's in my notes uh, because i was thinking the same thing uh, that you just mentioned um and, and and maybe we'll maybe we'll work through that if we have time, because I I didn't know how to quite work through it, because this is also you, you know you mentioned close of probation, but I wrote it as the Sunday law. That's how I worked it, because it was a close of probation for God's people. But you mentioned close of probation, which is for the whole of humanity. And so I didn't know how to marry those two together. So I wasn't going to say it, but you're right. Um, it, 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 this is the dividing line, whether it's the Sunday law for God's people, it's close of probation for God's people, or for the whole close of probation for the whole of humanity. But still, you know, whether it's for God's people, Sunday law, or close of probation, this still, I think, works. But I, I didn't know how to quite marry it together. So, so I was going to leave that out. But, but, but your thoughts are correct. Okay. Um, so what? So aside, aside from. Aside from the uh, strictly thinking about the Sabbath, okay, what else was done on the sixth day? I know we've been talking about the Sabbath here, so but let's try to take our mind out of Sabbath now and just think what else was done on the sixth day? What else did God do on six days? Six days. You mean creating man? Yes. So Okay. So Adam, humanity, was created on the sixth day. Okay. Um, 
And then seven, God rested. So, so again, there's a lot of thoughts that have to be developed. Okay. But this is just on the, on, the, on the simple surface level here. And how many steps did it take for God to develop Adam? How many steps did it take? Uh, was it formed from the dust and then then blow breath? Was it two? Yes. So it took two, so it took two steps. Okay, to create humanity. And right away, and and I and I got this from uh, I was inspired by this from Elder Perminder because he talked about this. And then right away, he goes into another story, which fits right into this, actually, which is what other Bible story that took two steps that, I don't want to give the answer away, that brought something to life? Dry bones? Yes, the dry bones. So the dry bones, right? Um, first, the first prophesying, first prophesying puts the sinews, the muscles, uh, and, and forms the body, but it doesn't give life until the second prophesying, which is the breath that actually give life to the form right so so this is equal to uh let's see ezekiel 37 and so this is all happening on the sixth day so Like I said, the thoughts are still ruminating uh, in my mind, but when, when Bob mentioned the sixth day, what day are we living in now? Sixth. We are living in the sixth day. And I, I believe Elder Parminder has, has, has mentioned that. Okay, So we are living in the sixth day. So and what and, and and what are we as well as students of prophecy, right? We're 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 learning how to prophesy. And and Elder Parminder has mentioned, you know, when he when he talks about morality, right? it, it does it does no good to talk about morality when you're dead. And so it's it's the prophesying that makes one come alive. So we're learning to prophesy. We're learning to, we're, we're gathering, we're preparing for the Sabbath. We're laboring now because we're still living in the sixth day. Um, when, we're, when we're gathering up double portion of information because we're all going to go to sleep. If, 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 if the ten, if the parable of the ten virgins is to be repeated, right, we need to gather up double portion of the Holy Spirit, of manna, uh, of oil, because when we are now, when we are ready to give the message that we would have a message to give, that we would have a present truth, okay? truth that was 200 years ago is not going to benefit 
today. Yes, it's still the truth. But the truth of 200 years ago, or the truth of the Sabbath of eight uh, of Exodus uh, 28 through 11, I don't think it's really going to benefit us. Um, so, if you had to look at Sabbath spiritually. And not and not literally. I just want to put some thought out there and read some Bible verses. Okay, um, Isaiah fifty six verses one and two. It says, "Thus saith the Lord." This is Isaiah fifty six verses one and two. Thus saith the Lord, "Keep ye judgment and do justice." For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to, the, to be revealed. Blessed is the person who does this and the people that lay hold of it, that keep the Sabbath from polluting it and keep their hand from doing any evil. Isaiah 58, 13, it says, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor God, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. And I think it's good to, those are the two verses of um, Isaiah, from Isaiah 56 and 58, but I think it would benefit all of us if we read uh, the whole, the whole chapter. Of uh, Isaiah 56 and 58, because it gives the it gives the Sabbath. These two verses talk about the Sabbath, but the whole of those two chapters put the Sabbath in a context. In, in what context the Sabbath was was mentioned? So I think it's a uh, it'd be beneficial to to know in what context Sabbath was being mentioned. <clears throat> Now, in uh, December fifteenth and through uh, December fifteenth and sixteenth, uh, twenty eighteen, in France, video number seven. Okay, so I'll repeat it again. December fifteenth through sixteen, twenty eighteen, France, video number seven. Uh, Elder Parminder mentioned this: is teaching in parables. That that was the uh, the title, I think, uh, teaching in parables uh, of that video presentation. And this is this is a quote from Elder Parminder. It says, "If we were true Seventh Day Adventists, our minds, our lives, would be filled with parables. We would live in a parable world." Again. If we were true Seventh-day Adventists, our minds, our lives would be filled with parables. We would live in a parable world. So Sabbath, you know, is it a principle or an example? How should we understand the Sabbath today? Well, literal, symbolic, spiritual, so we, we know that the fourth commandment was written based upon a patriarchal model. So yes, in today's society, it, it, is, it is based on a patriarchal model, but not like the patriarchal, it's not the same as the patriarchal model of, of ancient Israel. And what I mean by that is in the patriarchal model of ancient Israel, you had the patriarch, but he was, the patriarch was the ruler of his family. Right? So the whole model of the firstborn son 
receiving the birthright, the inheritance, and the blessings. Right? We don't really have children living under our roof. We don't really have com we don't really have command over our children. We don't tell our children what to do, what they can and cannot do, because we don't in, in our society. Okay, today's version. We can't practice patriarchy as they, as they did before because we don't have children living under our roof. For, and, and we don't command them what to do. You know, say, okay, if you obey all my commands and do what all I tell you to do, then I'll give you my inheritance, I'll give you my, you know, your, your blessings and all the birthrights. You know, we don't observe that uh, today. Um, we don't own slaves. We don't have maid servants. We don't have man servants. We don't have slaves today. Um, how many of us here are ranchers? We don't have cattle. We don't have sheep. We don't have goats because we're not ranchers. Now, some of us might be ranchers and have cattle and, and goats and sheep and chicken and things like that. But for the most part, we, we don't live in a, a, a rural agro, what was that word? Agrarian uh, society, right? Most of us live in cities. We have jobs. Um, we don't work out in the field. We don't have cows. And, you know, e e even those who say they are ranchers, I mean, I if you drive up, okay, if you drive up, uh, Highway 99 or Highway 5, and you see these uh, lots and lots and lots of cattle. No one's hurting them. Okay? They might come out, come by and drop off food. Uh, the, the watering system, it all does by itself. Are they really ranchers? No one goes out there and, you know, takes the cows or the cattle out into the field and let them graze and then ride their horses and bring them back in. You know, that's that's just not what happens in today's society. Um, strangers, okay, strangers within thy gates. We all, for for most of us, okay, uh, we don't we don't live in southern borders where we might have to harbor uh, immigrants that, that 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 might get through. Okay, uh, but for most of us, we live in cities. Uh, we have we have picket fences or you know some kind of fences for security. Uh, so we don't really have strangers uh, knocking at our gates. Uh, not like not like the the ancient times when when we look about when we think about Genesis 18 and Abraham. Right, the strangers that come within his gate, right? He didn't even have a gate, but we know that gate is a figurative language. He didn't have fences. Um, but those, but we we kind of have an idea where the boundary of your of your property is. And when he saw strangers, he brought them in and uh, fed them, right? Gave them rest, repose. Um, and Lot in Genesis 19, right when he had the strangers that came within his within his scope, um, we, we know that those the, the two angels, um, you know, he he did not let them stay outside. He he brought them in uh, to his house for for safety. Um, and or the we know the story about the judge in Judge 19, the Levite and his concubine, right. Um, uh, someone brought them into their house because they knew it was dangerous out in the city. And these are all parables for us. But literally, if we're to take this literally, we don't have strangers knocking at our doors. Okay, At, at most, we got FedEx and UPS uh, that drive up and, and, and drop off the, the things that we ordered online. Right? But for the most part, we don't have people coming um, asking for food or asking for water. And even if they did, we would be fearful of our lives and turn them away. 
right? And we would not be practicing what Abraham practiced and what Lot practiced, right? We, we, so so if, if we look at the model of how it was written, um, uh, this, the Sabbath commandment, the fourth commandment, it, it would not, literally, it would not apply to us. So how do we put this in our context? So, so if this was an example, so if this was an example of how uh, people should live, God's people should live in the, ta in the, in the time that was given in a patriarchal, uh, apis bull mindset, how would this apply to us spiritually? And as we talked before, we know it's about a relationship between God's people um, and, and God. So if we, if we were to rewrite this, knowing what the principle is, the principle of relationship between God's people and God and between God's people and the whole of humanity, not having slaves, not having cattle, not having strangers come. How would we rewrite this? And, and how would we apply it spiritually so that we can have a, a understanding? And it would not be a burden because we would not be thinking about, oh, what can we or cannot do? I'm not saying what those are not important, but I think it goes beyond what things, you know, what things on the Sabbath can we or cannot do. I think it goes way beyond that. And have you noticed when you read the, with the fourth commandment, somebody is missing? Yes, thank you so much for bringing that up. That is so troubling for me. I'm like, is she, the wife, supposed to be included with the husband? Because she's not the son, she's not the daughter, or is she the maidservant? Or... Number three, is she just not allowed to have the day off? I'm glad, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad um, we're thinking the same thoughts because as I was studying, this is like, the spouse is not even mentioned. Not the, at the, all. The, the wife, I mean, because they're mentioning children, we know that there has to be a spouse. We know there has to be a wife. You know, that, that's, 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 it's logical, right? But she's not even mentioned and is she not mentioned because because in our time we're supposed to realize that she's not even included in this fourth commandment either because she's not important or because she's not valuable or because she just doesn't get a day off okay uh, so, so whatever the reason the, the wife is not even mentioned to me says, it's, it, it, at least to me says, when I rewrite this, she's got to be included. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> and, and so how do we restore the fourth, fourth commandment with the wife in there that applies, the, the principle applies to our time? If we're to give an example, if, if we were to speak to someone, we know what the principle is. How are we to include the wife, speak in a language that modern day people could understand, Christians or otherwise, but mainly to Christians, because those, those God's people, those are the ones who we'll be speaking to, right? So- And we have to make it non-binary. Right, right. So, so putting all those together, knowing what we know now and what Elder Tess has taught us, how do we make this fourth commandment, like you said, women, men, children, non-binary, the LGBT, um, 
LGBTQIA uh, plus people, the two S um, people. Now, how do we make it for our time as, as Paul did? Okay? When you when you speak their language, put it put it in their context or in their in their shoes, and but giving them the gospel in a way that they can understand. So, and, and, and Elder Parminder has, has taught it. This is the fourth commandment, right? So being the fourth commandment, what does four represent? Any idea what four might represent? I was thinking the fourth generation. And fourth generation, it, that's good. That's great. That's exactly where we're going. Isn't so fourth generation. Progressive, progressive so four, destruction. Right. So fourth, so it's a destruction. We know that destruction is coming. So four, four generation. And what does four generation, what does that mean? Restoration. Is that what you were thinking? Well, that comes I, after, yes, but that that will come after. But that four completion. fourth gener what's that? Completion. Um, yes, but but sticking sticking with four, the fourth generation is what generation? The last generation. Yes, the last generation. It's the fourth generation, the final generation, the last generation. And who are the last generation? You mean we are? We are. We are. Okay. And that, it's, Paul was on his fourth missionary um, trip, and that was his fourth shipwreck also. Yeah. So four means it's the last. It's the final. It, it's It's complete. Yes, then it'll be restored, but we, so for final generation, fourth generation, um, and which, which we are, 144,000. So that's why I believe that understanding the Sabbath, you know, as, as Ellen White has mentioned, the Sabbath, testimony of Jesus, the nature of humanity, it's an anchor to God's people. And so I think it's very important as, as we are discussing this. Okay. Yeah. The fourth generation of those who understand the fourth commandment. Yeah. So this fourth commandment, final generation, I think we are to understand what the Sabbath is. So if we rewrite it, so let's, so if we rewrite the fourth commandment okay, for our generation symbolically, and we have to have this in our heart, we have to dismantle patriarchy. We have to dismantle sexism. We have to dismantle racism, nationalism, apis bull mentality, dominion over others, discrimination, dehumanization, marginalization, including and restoring equality to all humanity, which includes the two S LGBTQIA people. Right. So, so when we say that prophecy equals parable equals Sabbath equals Jesus equals types, shadows, symbols, figures. We, we 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 must we we it's it's vital that we put this fourth com, uh, commandment the sabbath commandment into our language so that first of all we understand it and we are settled in it we're settled in the truth and then we have a story that we can tell others, placing ourselves like Paul did in others' shoes in, in, from their point of view, yet 
telling the gospel, the Sabbath, Jesus. Because it's all it's it's all a parable. And it, and, it, and it's it's the prophecy that's gonna it's the prophecy which is a parable that is going to put the meat on the bones. And the second prophesying is going to breathe life into uh, into a dead people. So, so if I could add, um, if you divide the four into two, the two and the two, um, equality, and times by ten, and then we have restoration, 220. Yeah, another okay. number. Oh, okay, uh, say that again, please. So divide the four into two, which will be equality equal, and times by 10 will be 22 times 10 or 220, which will be restoration. 220 equals restoration. Because you, cause you times that by 10. Okay, I'm a little slow in math. But I'll write it down, and um, yeah, that that seems reasonable. Okay, so you times ten, and equals two twenty. Okay, yeah. So a, a, as I'm working through this, all the suggestions that um, you have given me today, I'll um, I'll excuse me. I'll try to develop it and see. Uh, how far I can get, uh, how I can, how far I can go with it, and uh, the next opportunity I have um, to uh, to present, I'll try to bring all this in. So, so I appreciate everybody's um, everybody's input, everybody's comments and and, and, and con contribution. Well, there were some in the comments in the chat um, that I've already mentioned, maybe even more than once about restoration in the comments. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I do believe, yeah, I do believe um, that this is all part of God's restoring process, that we have to understand the Sabbath correctly that it's that it's more than just a day um, of worship. Now I'm not taking away anything from what we're currently um, observe how we are observing the Sabbath. No, I'm not taking anything away. Though I believe also those are all legitimate, good, and correct. What I'm hoping to do is adding uh, and deepening our understanding. Um, to the Sabbath so that a, a, as we uh, approach and as we are living in the sixth day um, that we have a, a clear understanding of what, what Sabbath is so that we can have a right relationship with God and right relationship with humanity because it is about equality. So to add on to that, um, Moses was in the fourth generation. And when they came out, they had to be taught about Sabbath. We're in the fourth generation and we need to be taught about Sabbath. Not because it's our task, because it's not. We understand the Sabbath, but we don't understand it fully, right? And it is an important part of God's kingdom. And we're our part of our job is to teach other people about God's kingdom. And so we need to know the Sabbath. Amen. I fully agree. And I, and I hope, I hope that uh, today's presentation did um, provoke some thoughts and perhaps add, added a little more to our Sabbath understanding. And as we go forth, pondering upon some of these thoughts that might have been provoked, that um, and, and and what I would like 
is that as you're pondering upon the Sabbath, right? Um, if there are some more thoughts, like like what all of you brought up and I have written down, if there are more thoughts, I, I welcome uh, texting me, or actually better texting Logina because uh, she does better with the yeah. communication, texting and email and all of that. I I, I let her read all my texts and my emails. Uh, so yeah, but if if you have come across any, if you're inspired and come across any other thoughts, please send it my way, and uh, I will see how I can work it in and and develop our uh, our thought of, of Sabbath, because I, I do think it is it, it is critical. So, um, any other questions, uh, comments? Contributions? Well, I appreciate all the time you did in researching and, and coming up with the compare and contrast. Uh, it was really good food for thought. A beautiful study, Phil. You're fattening us up like Daniel and the Worthies. They were 10 times plumper and 10 times better. So. <laughs> Appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Super helpful. Thank you so much. Well, well, I was glad to be of service. Don't, for <laughs> Don't forget wiser too, Suzanne. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, and, and remember what um, you know the, the um, justification and sanctification. You know, it's uh, it's um, you know, sanctification is being justified for a lifetime. Justification is a work of a moment and sanctification is that work that that is continue, continued on uh, through lifetime. So um, I, I appreciate all, all the kind words, um, but again, as, 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 as new thoughts might provoke as you ponder upon this, um because because like i said this is still i believe uh it's a better understanding of the sabbath but still a, a, a surface so any thoughts that you might have uh bring it my send it my way and um i'll try to work uh with a, try to work through it god has been very very good to me and as i you know some sometimes you know, I, it's, it's it's frustrating sometimes, uh, and I keep telling myself this, but I, I but I, I don't do it because I keep forgetting. But I I need to have, I I need to have, a a, a little notebook that is chained, a little notebook and and a pen that is chained to my, uh, to my body, because I come up with these thoughts, and. It's so frustrating sometimes that by the time I find a paper and, and pen or pencil, I forget. And it's just, it's just fleeting thoughts. It's like, wow, that was a great thought. And, and you get distracted, right? You get called or, or your grandchild calls you and, and, and you get distracted. And all of a sudden that, that thought just flies away. And, it, and sometimes it's just very frustrating. And um, so, so I, I mean it when I say if you have any other thoughts, please um, send it my way. On your, yeah. phone, on your phone, they usually have apps for like a voice recorder. You can, if you have a thought, you can just quickly voice record it and then go back to it later. Okay. I was That's just going to say that. Good, good idea, Donna. Yeah. If, if you have an iPhone, I know iPhones do it for sure. Yeah, it, they have it on Android too. I know I do that often too when I don't have time. Yeah, just, just do a little bleep, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll ask my daughter-in-law where I can find that because she does all the computer stuff for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they also have like the kind of note notebooks on your app, a, a notebook app. If you don't like talking, you can actually write a word down or something that can bring to memory what you were. That's often easy too. I I keep my 
shopping list, my grocery shopping list <laughs> on that. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm more of a paper and pen kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the notes and the, the voice, it's just a quick note, you know, yes. just to remind you what it was when you before you go to write it down. By the time you get your pencil, you still have it. <laughs> exactly. Because you know what? I, you know, I constantly think, well, if I didn't have my little notepad, my notebook in my phone, I, when I get to the grocery store, I'd forget everything I ever, I'd be like, I, I don't even know what I need. Same. You know? Yeah. Sometimes right. I send yeah. myself a text. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would anybody like to close in prayer? I'll go ahead. Our, Our wonderful, wonderful God. God. What a beautiful Sabbath that you've given us. And we continue to enjoy the rest of the Sabbath, Lord. Thank you for the rain as um, we enjoyed some, maybe more than others, as far as the physical rain. And we thank you for the spiritual rain, Lord, that we've been able to share in this time. I thank you especially for Fel. Um, yesterday, we celebrated his uh, birthday. And we went for a beautiful hike in the um, Mariposa area, and the air was clear, the sun was shining, the breeze just felt great. And as we were walking, and um, just the two of us, and there was nobody in sight, it was just great to just be outdoors, Lord, the beauty that you've surrounded us. And as we were talking and we were um, hiking, we started off a, a wide path and as we kept trudging up the hill um, you can tell that there is less and less people that have likely um, walked that path and it just reminded me Lord of the the path that you've laid before us that we know that the road is broad that it's uh, as we continue to move forward Lord it, it will narrow and it is um, painful to hear and to know that um, those who have professed to follow you, Lord, at some point may no longer do so. But we pray that for each and every one of us, Lord, for Fel and myself, our friends and the family that we are in uh, communication with, um, the family unit that you've given us within this uh, movement, Lord, that we hold strong and we continue to move forward, to gather the double portion when we're able to. So when in due time, in the right season, the right words, in the right um, moment, that we are able to stand firm, Lord, and profess to know that you are our God in whom we trust. We praise and honor you and we ask special blessings for each and every one of us, Lord. We love you. Amen. 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 Well, well thank you.